uh, how you got record companies to do stuff for you, or, or you, how you did what you do, okay? Well, record labels like to be the great diplomats. They like to, you know, give something to this radio station and something to this radio station and something to this radio station. And my attitude was, you give everything to WBCN, and then we decide what you give to other radio stations. And if you were... <laughs> that was the way it worked. It was WBCN. And that was it. There was nothing more important than WBCN. And if I didn't like the way you divided up the pie, um, I was... Okay, I was vindictive. What can I say? <laughs> you screw WBCN. No one screws WBCN. And there was this one time, Epic Records, and 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 <laughs> my good friend Harvey Leeds, who comes and stays at my house, but he'll never forget this. He gave something to another radio station with Stevie Ray Vaughan, and I said, "What? We're the only ones that play Stevie Ray Vaughan. I, I, I'm glad they're going on the record, but we champion this artist. He's the most amazing guitarist. We played him when he was just like hitching up with David Bowie in the early days. Hello, we're the Stevie Ray Vaughan station. That's it. We're out of business. Don't ever bring me an epic record again. And of course, just, his career depends upon you adding his songs. So I just shut down the record label. What we got out of it was we got a free show at uh, Avalon plus a live broadcast of the legendary Stevie Ray Vaughan. So how do you work that? You you let him like s sweat for a while, and then you say, Harvey, no, no. what are we going to do? No, well, he called me up and said, what can we do? I said, here's what we want. Da -da, this, this, this. So he had to spend a fortune to do a live broadcast. because So the whole WBCN audience, the entire Boston audience, gets to hear Stevie Ray Vaughan live in concert. You know, Everyone gets to get in for free, which is amazing. And then on top of it, we get a dinner afterwards with Steve Ray Vaughan. We did, went to Davio's on Newbury Street. Man, uh, getting drunk with Stevie Ray Vaughan. I mean, what could be... So if I'm, uh, if I'm hearing you correctly, you would actually, deep down inside, be glad when you would be dissed by a label because then you knew there was big payback coming your way. <laughs> there was, well... If there wasn't big payback, there was no business. This was business. I mean, this was business. <laughs> they wanted to do business. We do business. But we defined how business was done. It we was a struggle. They tried to control <laughs> us, and we, you know. You don't, you don't control BC, and you don't control Boston, especially you dudes out of New York. We're Boston. I mean, this is like the Yankees and the Red Sox. Hello, you know, the Patriots and the Giants. No one controls us. Talk about a sports metaphor because we're going sports. No one messes Speaking with Boston. Speaking of sports. Ever, ever, ever. I think I got an, a cool memory that we both might have forgotten. Do you remember? And this is this is wicked. We actually played softball with Joan Jett. Not, we Joan played. Jett w wore a full-on wool, actual, real baseball uniform Baltimore and, played, Orioles. and played second base. She was so seriously into it. I went to a game with her, the Red Sox versus the Orioles, right? And the Red Sox kicked the Orioles' ass. I mean, they just kicked them. We're in Fenway Park, and she is so upset because I'm cheering for the Red Sox, and she's flipping out because they're losing. She took it so seriously. We also played softball with Huey Lewis. Remember I remember that? that. That was at the Boston Common, wasn't it? Actually, it was at the Boston Common. Some we, people we, say we, raised, we played we somebody at BU. Grand, we raised five. No, we, we, no, we played it. Uh, you're right. We played at BU. Not okay, Boston. all right. Maybe we played them twice. I don't we know. We raised a ton of money for um, uh, Jimmy Fun. Right. Juanita, did you ever play any of these games? No, no. The BC actually. and Ballbusters. Sorry to include you. Are you way over there, Juanita? No, no, no. I'm just listening. Go, go I mean, closer this to is them. amazing. Go this is before my time. So. <laughs> We're getting the real deal now. This is like the first time this info has come out. Yeah. <laughs> I, there's, there's something else that I had to say, but I, I totally forgot about it. So you know what I'm going to do? As a, I'm gonna play, play a song. song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I want to play something. Okay, I'm gonna look for my CD. It's here somewhere. Something kind of upbeat. Something for everyone. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. It's this iTunes thing. You see, it's tough to. Give me a break. Here we go. I All like the CD song. players. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay. WBCN. We got about. Dude. What am I forgetting? Am I forgetting something? I don't think so, dude. I think, you know, it's so freaking surreal. In, in 45 minutes, it's over. 11, 19, 40 minutes. You know, 28 or 7 years to spend these, the muscle, bone, sinew of my life and his life, everybody around his life. And then in, 75, in, in 40 minutes, it goes to static. And not only that, People out there who, who want to listen to rock, they want to listen to BCN, they want to listen to the BCN vibe, the BCN thing. They're, you know, they're 
up the creek without a paddle. And they're floating in a raft somewhere out in the middle of the ocean with no rock. It's tough. Okay, here we go. Let's talk again. I mean, you know, I got to say, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say I'm freaking out. Um, because it's 1121. And in, 40, in 39 minutes now, Adipus and Juanita and, and everybody in this room and everybody not in this room, it goes away. What does that mean to you? And what do you think it, and how do you interpret that it means, you know, what it means to the world of Boston, if you will? Well, uh, I guess history will have to. Um, but I mean, it's going to go to static. It's going to go, and you're going to be in your car driving home, and you're going to, can you imagine what that's going to feel like? Well, it's, it's, will, WBC will be reborn in other forms and other ways. It's the Zen. I'm looking at the Buddhist uh, aspect of it. Well, nothing it, nothing lasts forever. It dies, and it's going to be reborn. BCN will be reborn, and it's being reborn already. Sam Copper is being, making it reborn, and it'll it'll come back in other conglomerations. It'll come back, you know, when when Clear Channel has to divest their radio stations, and other people buy them and turn it over to very creative people and say, okay, run our radio stations, make them magical again. Okay, when it stops being corporate like that and it's going to happen again wbcn will reemerge. it will it'll be like the phoenix it's going to come up it's going to rise again from the ashes absolutely juanita why don't you grab a microphone um, you got one there? i have one yes you know i never really talked to you about this but you know you you worked at some half-baked radio station before and then, yeah. you, and then you came here uh what did it what did it mean to you you know you're a rock chick you were in a band you played the guitar you were badass a great guitar yeah yeah she played, she, she played great and it yeah. was a great guitar Thanks, and, guys. You know, what does that all mean to to you? I think it's sad BCN's going away just because new bands have such a hard time finding an outlet for music, and where are they going to go now, you know? I think it's really hard to track down that 18 to 34 audience, and it's hard to find them and, and know that they're listening, and that's why this format partially may be going away. But it's so important, I think, to to have one place where you can go where you know you're going to find awesome music. Like Oedipus's show, for so many years, you know. I mean, people would sit by the radio and write down every single song you played <laughs> and go buy it the next day. Yeah, I mean, dude. Everybody has that story. Everybody. Oedipus, listen to this. Uh, I was living, my first place, 1726 Com F, came from the University of New Hampshire. Lives on a couch for nine months. I'm taking a bath. I, I know that's kind of... Wimpy taking a bath, but There's I was taking a nothing bath. Nothing wimpy about taking a okay. bath, Bradley. And I had the radio on. I, you know, it was just a station. It was WBCM. And you came, you came on the radio and said, I've just come back from London and I've got a big stack of records and here they are. This is a big deal. I went over there and I met these people. I met the, I met the artists and they gave me these records and I'm going to play them for you now. And one of them, you know, was Gang of Four. Oh. Damaged Goods. I'm like, oh. i would literally like, oh my God. Next, Nina Hagen. Cosmo Shiva, maybe. I don't know. But you went out and you found the rock and blew me away. And so that's why, you know, I went, <laughs> I made four tapes, which all sucked. <laughs> you know, finally, <laughs> you know, I know. Finally, I get the call. Bradley, when are you going to do your first show? I'm like, oh, so that was awesome. You know, it's a big deal to have that memory in my head, which seems a billion miles away, and having you sit right in front of me right now. It's a huge Deal, and I imagine at one eighty, you feel the same way. And I know that I speak for Mark Hamilton and everyone who grew up. You know, no this to the jocks who didn't grow up around here, but the jocks who grew up around here and BCN was their thing, their god as kids. To actually be part of that it was a was a big damn deal. And and to have you sitting here is a big deal. Well, I, so, I, I only hired know. the best. I I heard it and I said, Yeah, I guess you're right. You are. You're the best. <laughs> I'm are just we? glad the uh, radio didn't fall in the bathtub. Oh, I know. <laughs> so, by the way, I, my, well, we wouldn't be here today. Would Hamilton's we? having a party over at the Middle East, and I guess everybody's going over there. People oh, say, yeah. "Where's the party?" Blah blah blah. So, um, Edibus, do you know what my last song is going to be? Can you guess? I have no idea, and I'm not going to be here because you have to do your thing, and that's what I've, you know, as you said, that's how you operate. That's how I operate. I don't need to be here. I need to be because you trust my, me. No, completely. And I need to be in, I, I know it's going to be magical. I need to be in my automobile blasting it full volume, you know, because 